I'm Sean Bowles, and I want to welcome you to Exploring the Prophetic Podcast. On this podcast, I have friends from all different backgrounds who each have a powerful story to tell about how the prophetic is shaping their world. I invite you to be part of the conversation. This is Exploring the Prophetic. Welcome today, Exploring the Prophetic. I call you guys the explorers, those of you who listen, because we're exploring themes of how God's speaking today and how it affects our everyday lives. And today we have on Charity Verkler Kayambe, and uh, her dad, Mark Verkler, was on recently. And he's been a pioneer for so many decades on hearing God's voice. And Charity has taken it to a 2.0 level. She's written many books, five, as a matter of fact, Hearing God's Voice Through Your Dreams, Everyday Angels, and Overflow of the Spirit, amongst other ones. She also has a doctorate in Bible studies. And it teaches all the time. She's been featured all over the place, Sid Ross, CBN, I mean, you name it, Create Charisma Magazine, Elijah List. But she's so good at making the supernatural practical, but she loves the supernatural. Some people who do that, they kind of water it down or they 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 speed they feed you baby spoons of something that needs to be really mature. But Charity is just organic in who she is. She shares really deep things in a way that's really accessible to lots of people, including us today, which is good. And I'm excited to talk to her, especially about her dream interpretation stuff. She is a master dream interpreter, but she also gives away the skills on how to interpret dreams. And it's unlike anybody else that I've heard in dream interpretation, other than some of our own team, Stephen Jenny Maddox and Barry Higginbotham, some of the people that we're around right here. Thank God we have some of those in our lives. But you're not going to want to miss her because especially when it comes to just her stories, because it's going to so inspire you. And that's what we want to do is I want to inspire you so you have your own encounters and believe God for everything he has for you. So stay tuned for charity. Hey, my fellow explorers. We have a brand new book out, and if you've ever been given a word that you're a Joseph, an Esther, a Solomon, or a Daniel, you need to learn how to hear God the way that they did. You need to have that place inside of you that connects to God, that can believe for His solutions on the world today, and for His problem-solving ability, His wisdom, His strategy. And so we've written this book called Wired to Hear, and it's connecting God's voice to your career and place of influence. You are going to love this book. I want to encourage you to get it today. My friend Bob Hassan, who does Exploring the Marketplace with me and myself, wrote this to take you on a journey of how to succeed in your place of career with God's voice and with connection to Him. Visit Bowles Ministries today and look up Wired to Hear or go to any bookstore you know and you should be able to find Wired to Hear. But get it, review it, and share it with someone else. Well, we are here on Exploring the Prophetic with Charity Kayembe. I'm so excited to talk. To you. I mean, I've known, I just talked to your dad on the podcast, but I've known about you guys forever. I mean, I I cut my teeth on your dad's manuals back when I was 19 and 20. I mean, a long time ago. I know we both look like we're in our 20s, but uh, we've had some history, right? So I love meeting you though, because you've taken a lot of what he's done and you have your own ministry where you've taken it even further. And we were just talking about that before, you know, the show, like talking about notes and stuff. And I was reading on some of the stuff you do, and we don't have to focus on this right now, but I love that on your website, you're like, we care about quantum physics and a spiritual way. We care about a technique of inner healing called tapping, which I've just heard about in, in the last four or five years has become a big deal. And like, there's these things that are like branches that don't always fall from the same trees from the past that are now being explored by like the future generation of the prophetic to go into areas and see breakthrough that are unusual because we have unusual problems in our generation. So I was so inspired by you, Charity. Thanks for being on the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It is an honor to be with you today. Oh, no, it's a bigger honor to have you. Well, kind of take me on the journey. I know, I mean, we know your dad's Mark uh, Verkler, but take us on the journey as far as how did your spiritual hearing God's voice life start? It started early. Um, I don't really remember a time when I didn't hear God's voice, which is such a gift. That is a gift. Um, um, Dad, as he shared with you, you know, he learned how to hear God's voice, and I was about eight years wow. old he learned wow. so of course he turned around and taught you know my brother and I we were just little and so I started hearing God's voice when I was very little and you know just a couple of years after that dad learned how to hear God's voice through dreams and so then he taught us dream interpretation so just all the way growing up you know we were always having conversations around the breakfast table well, what what did God say to you through your dreams or what wow. did you learn in your journaling you know and just sharing so that was just that was kind of our regular everyday life which was an awesome foundation to, to build on. And that was super rare when you were growing up. You probably didn't have like tons of friends who had that same expression, even if they were Christians as a family, but you guys have helped make it more non-rare now. I feel like you guys have been teaching and pioneering this for so long that it's become more of a, especially with dreams with you, you're such a dream person, dream interpreter. 
it's become more common for families to look at it because you guys have all ages of people who relate to your dream ministry, not just like the adults. But I was reading one of the reports on your website about an eight-year-old who became a dream interpreter at school. And that's crazy. But let's go back to your story. Though. I don't want to go too far into the ministry yet. So growing up, you just, you had this, this connection to God that was really defined by your parents. When did you start to see some of your calling in it and some of the, maybe what you were called to do? Well, I realized, you know, that kind of like you said, you know, people, other Christians, other believers, you know, they, they would hear God's voice maybe once in a while, or they would understand God spoke to them through dreams, but they would be like, well, maybe that's, you know, once every two or three years, God might speak to us through a dream, yeah. you know, maybe once in a lifetime, surely he can, mm-hmm. but it's not a regular everyday thing. But when I look in scripture, you know, it says God speaks oftentimes through men and oh, over man. and over again, right? They just don't recognize it through a dream, through a vision of the night. When deep sleep falls on men, they slumber in their bed. God says, I open their ears and seal their instruction to turn them from wrong during, keep them for pride and enlighten them with a light of revelation. And so I realized, well, I can get revelation every single night through my dreams. And I'm not special. I just know how. I just happen to have a dad who wow. talks now. So yeah. I, Everybody needs to know this, right? It's not once in a lifetime. It can be like every single night, God is speaking, downloading, you know, wisdom and creativity and warning and direction. And, and it's even through the crazy dreams, you know, the silly dreams we don't even want to talk about because people are going to think we're nuts. Well, there were silly dreams in the Bible. How about, you know, a loaf of bread wiping out an enemy army? Okay, that's pretty silly. Wow, that is silly, yeah. A star in the sky bowing down to you. I don't even know what that would look like. That's yeah. what And there was revelation from God in it. So. So even through the crazy dreams, when we decode the language, you know, we can translate the language God speaks at night and get revelation all the time. So you were kind of picking up on that and getting a passion or burden for that when you were young. And then how did that turn into your sense of calling to ministry? I'm really just passionate about the sacred supernatural, like everything to do with the the spirit realm, you know, even, you know, angels. I was, you know, I could see my guardian angels when I was a little girl. And, wow. and a lot of parents would normally say, you know, that's, you know, imagination, you know, you should grow up, don't pay attention. But of course, my parents, okay, dad's like, don't look at the things that are seen, look at the things that are unseen, right? And my mom's that's like, awesome. oh, those are her angels. So, so I believe, especially if children are so ultra prophetic, and yeah. if you can just nurture it and say yes to it instead of shutting it down. And so that was just, oh, I was encouraged in it. And so I was able to grow up in this. Oh, we can always, you know, look at the things that are unseen, set our mind on the spirit, keep seeking the things above. And so once you do that for a while, you're kind of just ruined for the natural yeah. world. You're just like, oh, yeah, I want to I want to keep focusing on the things above and and teaching other people how simple it is to actually do that, to step into it for themselves. Oh, that's so cool. And I think for you, it sounds like because you've been around the world, you've uh, traveled and taught and, and, and give it, but it's, it sounds like there's this also, even though there's this super spiritual side of you, there's also the rubber hits the road and there's some practical sides of you too. And that's what's sometimes missing when people focus on, at least, you know, my estimation, when people focus on a lot of the more of the mystical journey or angels or these kinds of things, what do you think is, the, was the grounder for you as you're growing up and as you're young in ministry to stay focused on, you know, to be caught between heaven and earth. I would love it. Even on your website where it's like, uh, I forget exactly what it says, but about basically heaven coming to earth. Yes. I, I really want the mystical to be practical. It needs to yeah. be relevant in our everyday lives for sure. And so, so when I will have these, you know, encounters or these spiritual experiences, you know, then I go to scripture. I'm like, Oh, it was there in scripture all along. And I'm like, okay, how did I position myself for that? Right. And, and there's got to be steps. If I can just kind of identify the steps that I took, then I can, I can do that. Right. Because I want the truth to be transferable, right. The revelation should be replicable. And so that other people can step into it. And that's, that's what we, we really do. It's like how to equipping manuals. That's everything we do and teach just follow me. This is what I did. And it'll work for you too. Cause I'm not, you know, super special. Anybody can do this if they know the steps to take. So. Oh, it's so cool. Well, tell me some of your favorite encounter stories from God to you, not just the ministry stories that you had output where you did ministry, but what are the, some of your favorite times that God showed up in a prophetic way? Um, well, one time that he showed up in a prophetic way, was actually 
Um, before I met my husband, I was in church and God's like, Hey, you're going to marry that guy. Wow. And I didn't even know him. I didn't even know his name. And I was just kind of admiring him from afar. <laughs> he was like so spiritual, right? He was always into worship. And I saw him like, we live in upstate New York. It's winter. There's snow. He's like, he was in, in university, right? And so he didn't even have a car when he first, he, he was here. And he was like walking to church in a snowstorm. Oh, and wow. He's so spiritual. He's so dedicated. So I was excited when God told me you're going to marry that guy. But I'm like, let me not be psycho about this. Okay. <laughs> I'll be like, Mary, I'm going to ponder these things in my heart. Okay. And I told God, I'm like, I understand what you're saying, God. I'm going to marry a guy like that, right? A guy who's spiritual, a guy you meet in church. And God's like, no, 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 you're going to marry that guy. Wow. So, okay. So then, you know, fast forward a little, a little bit. And you know how you're in church and the, the pastors will say, turn to the person next to you and greet. Yeah, of course. And I was like, yes. Okay. He was in the row right behind me. And so I was like, this is my chance. So I found out his name. And that is the only thing I knew. But then next week I go up to him in church. I'm like, hi, Leo. He had completely forgotten me. <laughs> I'm like, okay, my name is Charity. Yeah. We're going to be friends. All right. And so then he told me that he was from Zambia. And I'm like, oh, wow. I love Zambia. I had been there on a missions trip. I'm like, Zambia is a beautiful oh, cool. country. And, and he didn't even really believe me because most people don't really know where Zambia is. Okay, South Central Africa. And so then the next week I come to church. I'm like, there's a picture of me at Victoria Falls. I'm like, hello, Zambia. <laughs> okay, so that was kind of the the writing on the wall for him that got his attention and so we finally like we exchanged phone numbers and email addresses and that was like in december that we first met and then in february we started dating two months after that in april we got engaged and two wow. months after that, in june we got married so six that's months, amazing we, when did you tell him that you had a word i did not even tell him till like after we were married after, oh, we after. <laughs> wow because i think it's interesting because my wife had the same thing with me really? but i i literally was praying for people and i was single forever i mean i was single until i was 37 and i i never been married and didn't date anyone serious except for I had two serious girlfriends but it was long before and so like i literally walked up to these three girls who it was a kind of a young adult kind of crowd and I walked up to them and I said, oh, no, I actually had them come forward because I knew they were from Vegas. Someone had told me that some people drove all the way from Vegas to Phoenix to come up here, girls. And I prayed for them. Each one of them, they're all three of our best friends, you know, like my wife and then two or two best friends still to this day. But I grabbed her hand and she had been taught you don't get words for marriage. Like she'd been taught like most people misrepresent this. It doesn't work out well. And she had a vision of us being married under a tree, like a big oak tree. And it was so funny. She, didn't, of course, didn't tell me. And and uh, so I pursued her a few years later. We, she moved to L.A. and I pursued her. After we were engaged, two or three months, one of her friends challenged her who knew one of those two girls and said, you need to tell him. And she's like, oh, I don't know. Like, we're not married yet. I'm not. Married yet. And she's like, no, tell him. It'll encourage him. And in our wedding venue, excuse me, the wedding planner had found we were going to be married under a thousand year old oak tree. <gasps> So I mean, at that point, it's her whole vision, you know, so it's not even her, you know? So she, she's like, ah, oh, just so you know. And I'm like, why didn't you tell me this? Like, right when we got engaged, like once we're engaged, you can't manipulate. I'm the one who pursued you, you know, she's laughing. But I think it's really interesting how God, because I was stalked by some people who had a wrong, you know, who didn't have real revelation. So I love that you had that. And I love how you held it. I just love how you carried it. But how, what a cool encounter, because we are talking about how hearing God has natural ramifications. And for you, it formed your whole family. How many kids do you guys have? We are actually child free. Okay. Yeah. I saw kids on the website. I thought it was, but you've been married for like 18 years. Yes. We just celebrated our wedding anniversary. Yes. Congratulations. I mean, that's a, that's a real word. 18 years later and you guys love each other. That's amazing. Thank wow. You. Well, tell me, tell me another one. I want to hear another one of these. Well, okay. How, that was hearing God's voice during the day. So hearing God's voice at night, yes. your dream. I can tell you about that one time, you know, and this is just how it's really practical. It's not just, you know, the big life calling and ministry direction dreams, which we can absolutely get. God will give us the big revelation, but most of the time, you know, we're on the right path. We don't need our whole entire life changed. We just need a little, you know, push and encouragement. And so I was like leading 
my husband and I actually both, we were asked to lead a, a couple's Bible study. Um, but it was for a group of people that we didn't know really well. And, you know, we said, yeah, sure, that would be awesome. But we realized shortly into it that we were the only charismatics in the group. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, air quotes. Okay. <laughs> um, because, you know, I was wanting to, you know, live out, show them how, you know, walking with Holy Spirit, it just, it flavors every other aspect of life and it can be so exciting and, you know, but the healing and gifts and tongues and prophecy, they were not interested in those gifts wow. at all. And, and so this left me with a lot of tension, okay, in my mm. heart, because I'm feeling conflicted. I, I want to be authentic. I want to lead them into all of this encounter, but they are like, so not receiving it. And I don't, you know, don't want to offend them. And so it was like a Tuesday night. It was after one of these Bible studies. We had driven home. I was telling my husband, we are not the right people to be leading this group, okay? And you better believe I was telling God about this. I'm like, hello, do you see what is going on down here? Okay, I am stressing out. And you're not supposed to be stressed out about Bible studies. This, no. this isn't how it's supposed to work. And so then I have a dream, okay? And, and this is how God speaks through the crazy dreams, all right? I had a dream it was kind of like one of those Tim Allen Christmas movies. You know how there's like an old Santa Claus and he's retiring and he needs to christen the new yes. Santa yes. Claus. And it's like, okay, that was me. I was the new Santa. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I was not very confident of this new position as they always seem to be in those Santa movies. And I didn't think I could do it. Okay. But then I'm christened with the magic Santa superpowers. And I'm like, oh, around the world in a single night. No problem. Okay. And so then I wake up. Now, what in the world does this mean? Obviously, I've been watching too much movies, right? Too much TV. <laughs> you know, and, and we would normally just discount this dream, just dismiss it. And I'm like, no, God speaks even through the crazy dreams. So in order to decode and decrypt the dreams, we just ask some questions. And like one question we ask is, what is the main action? In the dream, what am I doing? Oh, well, in the dream, I was getting a new job, right? Mm -hmm. And so then we ask, well, what is the main emotion in the dream? In the dream, how am I feeling? And I was not at all confident. So we just take that main action, main emotion from the dream, and we overlay it onto the setting of our waking world. And I say, well, where in my waking life do I have a new responsibility entrusted to me that I am not confident in? That's so, so good. I know the area of my life that God is speaking to. And so, oh, that's the setting of the dream. What was going on in my waking world? I know, oh, it's this Bible study. I am not confident in leading. And then I get to see God's perspective. Right? That's why God says, don't look at the things that are seen, look at the things that are unseen. And his perspective was this whole Santa Claus situation. Because wow. he says, look, of all the people in all the world that could be the next Santa, right? It's you. So you're chosen, right? You're yeah. positioned here. It's not random. Are your steps not ordered by me, right? That's what God says. And not only have I positioned you in this group for this season, I've anointed you. Okay, that was the magic Santa superpowers. Okay, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, right? His grace, his wisdom to be who he wanted me to be in that situation. So I understood, oh, that was God's revelation and his perspective. And I did understand his message and I was encouraged. I'm like, okay, God, you want us here. You're anointing us for this job. But I still did have one issue with God about the specific symbol used. I'm like, Santa Claus, seriously? This is very unbiblical. I had to explain to God, it was totally unspiritual. <laughs> right? He should be using way more spiritual symbols in my dream, right? And so as I'm trying to enlighten God, no, he just laughs. He's like, oh, come on, Cher. Don't you get it? You're a carrier of my presence. Oh, it's so cool. You're bringing me and my gifts to the group. I'm like, okay, God, when you put it like that, Santa is a pretty good symbol. Totally. So that's how practical it can be. That's how fun it can be. Because well, I, I mean, I, now I'm hungry. I'm sure everyone else who's listening is hungry to go through just your course on dreaming because that was so, that's probably the clearest I've ever seen someone use a model or a tool to bring somebody into interpretation. I mean, this is obviously yourself, but it's, it's funny because I feel like for me, everybody I know can dream but not everybody I know believes that they can interpret their dream because they're looking for a special moment where it all of a sudden happens. And I've always had to tell people with all of this, you have to pursue it and you have to actually work it through. 
And that's the hard, when we, when we're given work or homework or assignments, we don't ever want to do it. And I'm like, well, the only way you're going to grow is to do it. And the only way you're going to get something out of this, even when you get a prophetic word from somebody, you got some homework to do. So actually like, how does this fit? What is this? I'm going to weigh it. I'm going to figure it out. And dreams to me are like so rewarding. They're just so rewarding. And for a long time though, I didn't think they were because I was so frustrated with the language. Like what you just described to me sounds so fun now, but me 10 years ago, I would have been like, that's exhausting. But it was because of my mindset, because I, I, I want it to just have instantaneous like revelation versus actually I get to work with this with God and learn about his nature through it. And that's the part that was missing. So tell me your passion for dreams. Like tell me like in training people for, for dreams, have you had most people get it? Is there a lot of people who don't get it? What does it look like for you? Oh, we have, we have people get it. Absolutely. Because we lead them step by step, just like yeah. I told you, it's not, I'm not going to get a prophetic word of knowledge to interpret your dream. I'm going to ask you this and this and this. And that's what makes it so cool. This kind of process and method is that you as the dreamer are the very best person to interpret your own dream. For so reasons. Number one, you know what the symbols mean to you better than anyone. Okay. Symbols are personal to the dreamer. And that's yeah. so, so important for people to understand. I have a whole chapter in my book on why we don't use dream symbol dictionaries because Actually, you know, what something means to me, it could mean the exact opposite to you, depending totally. on our experience, our history. You know, you maybe love dogs. And if I was viciously mauled and attacked by a dog, <laughs> opposite thing, right? Yeah. And, and so, so number one, the, the dreamer is the best person to interpret the dream because they know what the symbol means to them personally. And God will custom design, tailor make and handpick symbols for you. Yeah. In your own uh, language, number one. And number two, the best reason that the, the dreamer is the best person to interpret their dream is because they know the setting from their waking world better than anyone. And I think that's one of the key pieces that is so often overlooked is what is the setting? What are you thinking yeah. about when you go to sleep at night? What is going on during your day? What are you praying about as you go to bed? Because whatever is on our heart, that's what the dream is going to speak to. That's what God is going to to give us revelation about and and it's so easy to kind of equip and empower people when they understand it is a symbolic language right it is you know needs to be decoded and decrypted yeah. but the really encouraging thing about it is that it is a language right and languages can be learned right if, if you say something to me in spanish and i understand what you say you're not going to say oh wow charity you have the gift of spanish <laughs> that is so good oh i don't have the gift I yeah yeah, the language of dreams. Yes. And yeah, that's, that's so huge. Dreams. Well, and, and I, I will say this, Charity. I know like, um, I, you know, I live in Los Angeles. So in the entertainment industry, in the entertainment world, in the tech world, people are having dreams and pursuing dream interpreters all the time. As a matter of fact, one of our friends, John Paul Jackson, who's passed away now, he was known prolifically for dreams in a way that in the church, in a way that not many people were known. And towards the end of his life, he started getting people like Oprah and Bill Gates reaching out to him to interpret dreams. And he didn't do it because he felt like that wasn't as important as what he was doing for the church. I'm not sure exactly the value of it, uh, the value system be choice behind it. But I remember just hearing that, like, from one of the people who worked for him, like, before he passed away and said, like, he, he wouldn't do it. And I, I was out of touch with him at that point. But I'm like, that's exactly where we need to be is like finding out how to express God's heart through ways he's already speaking to people and hiding himself in people. So I love that you're doing this. I, I mean, I feel like it's rare, but it won't be. It's something that like you're imparting a language and there's other people, God's giving this kind of hunger and desire for it to impart a language. But I feel like everywhere I go, politicians, entertainers, business people are saying, do you interpret dreams? And I'm starting to say yes, even though I'm not always the best dream interpreter. So I'm going to go through your course and read your book. I promise. I'm, that's not just me saying that. I need some more tools. And I have, I've read some really good tools. But what you just said was really practical. Okay, well, take us further. We have a few more minutes left. Take us further. Because one of the things you talked about a few minutes ago was angels when you were growing up. And you've had quite a few encounters. And so you see things spiritually. Do you see with your eyes open? Like are you a, what they call a naked eye seer, which means you see it as real as you and me? Or is it more in your internal? Uh, spirit, what, how do you see things? And take us on a journey story. Yes, I do see with the eyes of my heart, spiritual yeah. eyes. So, and I think that's how most people see. Most yeah, me too. Time. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, and and we can be encouraged. A lot of times we kind of discount that and dismiss it, but it's really amazing. And 
in Acts, when it talks about the angel coming and rescuing Peter out of the jail cell, yeah. right? There is a bright light shining. He's telling him, get up. He's hitting him on the side saying, come on. And we think, oh, this is physical, tangible, material realm stuff, right? Not like our, our visions. But no, yeah. it says he did not realize what was happening was real. He thought he was just seeing a vision. And that's so encouraging to us because, oh, it is things in our minds, in our yeah. hearts. That's, that's how it was with Daniel. Daniel 7.1 and 7.15, it was visions in his mind. So we don't want to dismiss them. We don't want to discount them. You know, one really awesome story is when I was um, on a, a mission trip to a closed country in Asia. And... Mm. Um, we were staying on a bordering country. And so we wanted to take uh, Bibles across the border and um, we would just fill up our backpacks full of bread. Okay. That was the code word uh, for the Bibles. And we had our pockets full of crumbs. Those were the tracks and oh, wow. we were gonna try to go across the border. And, you know, it was kind of like the, you know, the airport, they have the security and there's the, they can see the x-ray. You can put your bags on the yeah. x-ray and they can see what's inside. And, So that's how it was. And so it was kind of like the airport, except for the security guards had AK-47s. Okay, so that was different from the airport. Um, But the way that we were planning to get across, our big, you know, brilliant strategy was just to play dumb. Okay, because what happens right before you get the x-ray machine, you get your passport stamped. And so we were just going to get our passport stamped and just be so consumed with our passport and the pretty colors and the new stamp and just walk and walk and walk and ignore all of this x-ray machine happening over here and walk like right out the door. That was our plan. Okay, we didn't know it work. Okay. But, so in this moment, you can imagine, you know, there's a little bit of stress. You know, if I look at the natural world, yeah. 47, I'm going to freak out, right? That's why God says, hey, don't look at the natural. Don't look at the things that are seen. Set your mind in the spirit. Look at the things that are unseen. And so I know my angels are there, right there. Um, my two angels, Potus and Jobus, okay, they're kind of like my big brothers. Um, they're they're sort of like bodyguards and um, like, you know, the best version of your very best friend. Okay. And so when I can see them with me, scripture says they are there, right? Scripture says God has given his angels charge over me to guard me in all my ways. Scripture says that the angels have gotten camp around about me. So I know that's true. Let me take the next step and look in the spirit to see wow. it's true. Because whatever my focus is, that informs my emotions, right? So yeah. if I'm looking at the natural, yeah. freaking out, right? Let me look at the spirit. Oh, angels. Okay. Peace, yeah. joy, faith. Okay. So I look in the spirit to see what I can see. And between me, there's the guards over here. And then I'm here and between us are my angels and they're kind of like running interference and they walk with me between me and the guards to kind of block me from their view. And, and I don't believe the guards ever saw me because they never once stopped me. I went back and forth across that border a few times that day. And then in the coming weeks too, and I was never once stopped. So that's wow. the way that we can like partner with angels in the Great Commission. It's not just angels for angels sake. It's angels and us serving God together and advancing the kingdom. So and yeah. Just getting your eyes open to it and believing in faith. That's just so huge. I think there's so much going on around us. And I feel like the more, and I still feel new all the time. I'm 30 years in as far as my ministry. And I, all of a sudden I'll, I'll think something or, or, or think I should think pray right now for what's around me in the spirit. And I see that it's like the first time again, I'm like, why didn't I pray this yesterday? You know, like you just have that moment where you're like being more present or more connected or more mindful to what God's doing. And it just makes all the difference in the world. I feel like that's, that's my challenge is to force myself every day to come out of a stupor, to be mindful. I'll like wake up and just put my girls in school and do whatever. And I'm like, wait, spirit, there you are. Yes, God, you're here. And I have to like, I, I have to challenge myself daily. Not everyone's like that. I mean, you're probably not like that. But I feel like if we do, if you find yourself and you're here, like you're more like me, then set an alarm on your phone. Like, you know, if you wake up at six, what, at eight o'clock, say, what is Jesus doing? Or, you know, what's the Holy Spirit doing? Like, like make yourself do it. For me, I'm not that gifted, but I'm mindful. And I actually force myself into activities to learn about who God is and how to practically do something with that in my life. And whereas other people are like, how did you grow in this? Like you must've had a visitation of the angel Gabriel or something joking around, you know, I'm like zero signs over my body. I have no birthmark on my butt that proves anything. I just pursued God over and over and over. I said, this is who you are. I need you. I want you. I love you. And you want me more than I want you. So I love what you're saying. Cause it's so practical charity. It's so cool. Well, I, I would love to work with you some in, in the future on some of the stuff. 
I'd love to introduce you to our platform and and maybe take them through some of the journey. But uh, how do people get a hold of you? How do people get your new book? I'm so excited. Yes, um, my book, Hearing God Through Your Dreams and Everyday Angels and the videos and DVDs, all those resources are on my website, which is glorywaves.org. Um, glorywaves.org slash dreams will actually take you to a free dreams crash course. Anybody can sign up for that. And I've got blogs where I share, you know, angelic encounters, dream interpretations, what Holy Spirit is teaching me on the sacred supernatural. And if you sign up for that, then we can let you know about free online events that we're doing. So yeah, we would love to have you connect with us. That's awesome. Well, we'll be in touch with you in the future and don't just take the free dream crash course. Go all the way. Let's get dreamers trained. I'm serious. We need that dream language. So this is so good. Thank you, Charity, for being on today. It's so rich. Thank you so much for having me, Sean. God bless you. Bless you too.